Welcome back everyone, this is Ty, and we got another Ty and Gabe Builds tech episode today. Gig is not here again because this is tech, this is not his specialty, but today we're gonna be hooking up a Raspberry Pi to the internet, it's gonna be running a web server and we're gonna be able to contact it from anywhere in the world. So we're hooking this web server up because we wanna be able to control the message board that I made in a previous episode from anywhere. I could be in a Starbucks doing it, in a grocery store. I could visit this URL and send any message I want. And so I made a small web application that can be hosted on this thing where if you visit a URL, you can send any message to the message board and it will display it. So this episode, I'm gonna walk through exactly what I did to hook this thing up to the internet and the web application I use to display messages to the board from anywhere. Before we get started, I just wanna get a little disclaimer out there. You should do this at your own risk. By opening up your, your LAN to the internet, you're opening yourself up to a lot of security vulnerabilities. And so I would just be aware of that before you do anything like this. All right, the nuts and bolts of this operation. The first thing that we need to do is sign up for no IP. No IP is just a service that keeps track of your IP address. Normally, if you don't pay for a static IP address, all ISPs give you a dynamic one. So if we wanted to host the Pi on your, your network, we would need to have either a static IP or a domain that points to the current IP of the Pi. And we're going to do the latter because typically a static IP costs about $25 a month for an ISP. So no IP is just a service that's going to run on the Raspberry Pi. And this service that is running on the Raspberry Pi is going to constantly hit the no IP web servers and keep the current IP address for the Raspberry Pi up to date. This is important because we're going to have a domain, a free domain they're going to give us to point to that current IP so that when we visit that domain, we can visit the, the IP address of our Raspberry Pi. So the first thing we need to do is just sign up. You're just going to provide an email, password, uh, host name. They, they give you some options here uh, to check to see if they're created. And uh, I went to the free version. It doesn't have any bells and whistles, but it gets the job done. And then you'll click sign up. Okay, so once you finish sign up, you should get to a page like this. Uh, I filled out all the information, username, uh, password, all that stuff. Uh, picked a random host name, I think it was tying gig. Um, <laughs> definitely not gonna use that from a message board, but uh, it's just for the demo. And what we need to do now, as you can see, is the first step was to create a host name, and we already did that. The second step is to download this client, which will be the service that's running on the Raspberry Pi to update no IP with the current IP address of the Raspberry Pi. And the third step we to port forward, which we'll get to that later. So I'm going to just set up this dynamic client here. Um, to do that, I'm just going to click on this. Uh, and so once you get to this dashboard here, after clicking the getting started, you just want to go to dynamic DNS, click on the client, and then you'll click on Linux, and you'll follow the instructions here. To install this service, you need to actually just do something like this. Um, it just I did exactly as it is to get my service to run with no issues. I'll link an article um, describing this actually in more detail in case you run into issues. But the idea is you download the package in the user local source directory, you install it, it has the service installed, you create the config for the service, it'll ask for your username and password which you'll include, and then you can launch it by just running the service like this. Now if you wanted the service to run on boot, you're going to have to actually do something additionally, and that's going to modify the start file. So. I'll show you that right now. And so if you wanted to run this on boot, you just have to additionally add it to your uh, rc.local file. So you have to do vi, um, actually sudo vi etsy rc.local. And then you'll need to make sure that this line here is added sudo no ip2. That'll just make sure when you start up, switch users, it just makes sure the service is running. And if you quit this, you gotta ensure that the service is running, so you just go to ps-ef, pipe it into grep, and look for no IP. And you'll see that there's actually a service running for 675 is the PID. So we're currently sending updates to no IP. And also to verify that no IP is getting updates, just go to your dashboard, dynamic IP, and it'll say last update here. If there was no update, it'd be an exclamation point, and it would tell you that. I remember when I first started this, took about 30 minutes since that was the interval I set before an update was sent so don't worry if your service is running you're not getting an update just wait 30 minutes okay so we did the first two steps which is we downloaded the client installed it we set up the client so that it starts on boot and we ensured that the 
no IP web server is actually getting the latest IP address from the Raspberry Pi. The next and last step we'll need to do is set up port forwarding. This step is important because now that we have no IP set up to have the current IP address and we have a host that points to your IP address, we need to open up a few ports to route them to the correct device in your local area network. So in this case, we need to route to the Raspberry Pi. So you need to set up port forwarding your router to ensure that whatever web server you have set up for what port, in my case, I'm running a Ruby on Rails application on 3000, that the port forward forwards anything that requests port 3000 to the actual correct device. Now, now this is going to vary a lot depending on your router and your ISP and things like that. If you have Neck or uh, Linksys, it's going to be different per router. But I have Xfinity and I'm so I use the XFi uh, remote. Got it set up very easily. And there's also a, a nice article here if you click on this link that describes for various ones how to set it up. And so I would just follow those instructions. And you can also just search for your specific router how to set it up. But the idea is you're going to name the IP address of the device that you want based on the port that is requested. So once 80 is requested, if you want 80, 3000 in my case, the router will know, okay, I have this port forward set up or port 3000 is requested, send it to this LAN IP. In my case, I'm sending it to the Raspberry Pi's IP. I have a static IP for my Raspberry Pi, so it knows exactly where to go. Okay, great. So now with that set up, we completed all the steps. We have no IP service set up on the Raspberry Pi to give no IP to know exactly what is the current IP address of the Raspberry Pi. We set up port forwarding so that if anything requests that IP address, it forwards that request to the correct device, the Raspberry Pi. And we have a domain pointing to that current IP address given us by no IP. We're just gonna actually set up the web server now on port 3000, and then we're going to test it out by sending a request to the web server and showing the message that comes on the screen. Okay, so I'm in the Raspberry Pi and I'm in the current directory for the project that I set up with the code. I'll link that in the description below. And if you set up the message board, you'll be able to do this as well. So if you go to this Pi, you can run the application. I'm gonna set it up so that any IP address can contact it. We're also gonna run the server. Great, so the server's up and running. It's running on 0 .0 .0 .0 0 3000 and now we'll try sending a message to the actual message board. So one thing to note is that I'm not actually sending the message through the URL that I got from no IP from my laptop because unfortunately you cannot use that domain or IP from your local area network to contact the Pi. It's just not going to work. So you need to either get a friend or use your phone on cellular data to actually communicate with it or just not be in the house to actually send messages. So I'm gonna send it on my phone and I'm just gonna hit the host name that we had previously set up a no IP and then I'm going to go to the path that'll send the message based on the application I made and I'm gonna send the message. Great, and as you can see, I sent the message. It says ang, A-N-G, and it's actually, it is, it's scrolling the message across the screen. So that's great. That about wraps it up for this one, folks. Like, comment, subscribe. You know I'm gonna say it, just do it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, I'll answer them. If you have any questions about the web server, feel free to look at the GitHub repository. The readme will probably have more details. I'll leave some more things in the description. Next week will be a woodworking one. The week after will be a tech one, and we'll go from there. See you later, until next time.